I have my computer next to me, so I'm cheating. Carl will come later, because I'll do needle binding first, and that's boring as hell for him. Anyway, Charlotte wins. I see she logged in first, but Torwin was a very close second from the Dragon House. Charlotte's in Bergen. Uh, Bergen by American, sorry. Um, Ashley's here. She's finishing a hat. So Ashley's here. She's oh, I'm hearing myself. That's not fun. Anyway, oh, and Kaya is here for Sir Landa. Hello, Kaya. <laughs> we'll bring your brother out soon. Christmas is coming. We're going to Selya, by the way. We didn't quite probably mention that, but it looks like we will be there from late Christmas Eve if we don't have to go through like a Star Wars snowstorm uh, until the new year. Are you making the turkey this year? <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with the uh, turkey story, I believe it was week 93. That was fun. That's where I ripped Carl a new asshole uh, for saying he has a tame American because I don't know and offering us up to cook the turkey. I can't cook turkey. We did it though, actually. <laughs> Um, anyway, that was funny. And Arlene's here, and Susan's still in Adirondacks. It's cold where you guys are, too. Cold where Arlene is, too, in Winnipeg. She's got minus 14 Celsius. What the heck is it here? How cold is it in Bergen, Charlotte? That's, uh, about two and a half hours southwest of us. Let's see what Gudvangen is. I got my... I'm cheating. I have a computer next to me now, because we're indoors. Here, Gudvangen. It is, according to this, one degree. That cannot be true. I think they're measuring a different point. They must be measuring by the tunnel. No. Well, actually, no. Maybe it's a little bit better here. It says minus one, one, one minus one. But it was cold. Fingers are still red from when we were outside uh, filming. We had uh, online guiding today at about an hour and a half ago. That was kind of fun. We had a girl from Germany who is participating in HEMA. I have to ask Carl more about that. Anyway. Where is the, how cold? So we have to, this is what we ask in Duluth, Minnesota all the time. How cold is it? So how cold is it where you are? It's, it's a competition. <laughs> we like to, uh, Duluth likes to compete with Yakutsk. Every once in a while we win. Uh, ah, there's Lisa Natibia is here as well from Arkansas. It's chilly outside where she is too, but toasty inside. It's not quite toasty enough in here yet, but that's because the electricity is really expensive this year. Uh, Torben says, how things? It's rather cold here. We just came back from Shinzarvik. Did I say that right? Christmas street opening and it was rather tiny. We're having our Christmas tree lighting ceremony here in August. I mean, in, um, Gudvangen, I mean, on Friday. That'll be fun. Um, Gudvangen basically exists of one street. So, and it's like one block. <laughs> so it'll be quite cute. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, Carl's not very social, so he's not going to go, and I told him, screw him, I'm going anyway. <laughs> so if you want to come and have some glurg with me in Gudvangen on Friday, that's the day. Uh, Saturday and Sunday we have our Christmas market here. That'll be from 10 to 6 o'clock. So we might have to send a little late on Saturday, maybe one hour later. I'll ask Carl when he gets here. Anyway. JD is here from the land of the darkness and rain, and Anne Moreau is here. How's your stats busting going, guys? Kaya's gonna make Christmas food, but she says that we have to do the damn turkey. <laughs> He's ignoring me. <laughs> we'll bring the mayonnaise. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll do the damn turkey, but we might have to start at like 8 in the morning in order to get it done by 5 in the afternoon. Five in the evening. Prude is here. She spent her day putting the ruffle on her petticoat, and now it's pretty and, and keeps out the wind and even better. She's ready for the cold in Russia. And Maria says she made it on time. Yay! <laughs> so I finished my project for Maria's um, advent calendar in needle binding. I have to just write it up now, but I need to get a picture of Carl in it. Carl's going to be my model again this year. Uh, but that starts in, what, two weeks? Uh, or is it next weekend uh, that that starts, actually, Maria? The first weekend in Advent, is that next weekend? Um, but you go to, she can put the link in here, but it's the uh, Master of Null Binding. Um, uh, and that's where you'll see the Christmas calendar. And you can see patterns from the year before, and there'll be four, at least four New Year pa patterns this year. So, I'm excited. And they'll be translated in as many languages as we can figure out. Uh... It's minus four in Kansas where Lear is. Torben says, how are things? It's rather cold here. Oh, yeah, I already read that. Dang it, I'm boring. And Garcia's here in Holland, minus one. 
So we have quite a few people. And Nellis here, greeting from the bus somewhere between Tampere and you and Sue, if I'm saying that right. Anyway, she went to a, a craft fair, I hear, and she bought lots of stuff. So Nell, you have to tell us what you bought. Uh, yep, it is next week, and then it starts. Oh, I have to get my thing written up pretty soon, though. I've got the pictures. It's, um, I need to color correct them because the light in my living room was extremely yellow. Yep, my knees. We have to slather the turkey. <laughs> Uh, remember when cooking the tikr to spread its leg and see if it bleeds? <laughs> That's true. It was so bad. That was actually a classic. Probably the best episode ever. Uh, Carl was squirming. Week 93. There's a reason I actually remember what week that was. Anyway, you're looking at my nose because I'm going to show you on the, uh, we're going to do spirals. So I can see. So this is what I did. I actually was pretty effective. Uh, so effective that I hurt my shoulder. I do have chronic tendonitis in both wrists, elbows, and shoulders, and this time it went straight in my shoulder, and I actually, when I was, I stretched when I was sleeping or something, and I pulled a muscle, and that was about three weeks ago, and then I thought it was better, and then it was hurting more, and I couldn't figure out why anyway, so I'm sitting there needle binding away, and I thought, crap, I've made a lot of hats lately, but doing this, so now I have to try to needle bind doing this <laughs> for a little while, um, change it up a little bit. That's the first time I think I've actually uh, hit my tendonitis in needle binding. So I made another one of these. This is my stash yarn. Um, now there's two of these, actually, but I still have enough. This is from that poncho that I ripped up, so we call it reclaimed wool. Uh, and I actually have enough to make one or two more of these hats. So I could actually put them in our web shop because I have multiple of the same. Anyway, and this was the hat I made last weekend, uh, the multiple green color. Uh, last week, I mean, and it's uh, not enough to make wrist warmers. But I didn't have any more of this yarn to make a multicolored hat, so I'm either going to finish them off and just call it a pulse warmer. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, <laughs> but I could always just, you know, tie it at the bottom and make a little bag, but eh. anyway, we'll see. So then I made... Because I'm tired of making hats, I decided to do a spiral hat. That's the one you see on the cover with a very green day because I went out and filmed it too late. So this is a spiral that starts in the middle. And it goes like that. I had mine end in the same spot, though, which makes it a little bit lower here. But I kind of like the idea that there was a border. But not too thick. So, so that's that hat. And I either had enough... I don't know if I had enough to make one more hat in a solid color or even striped, but if anything, I'd have to have two-toned. And because I'm tired of making hats, I started wrist warmers, but I'm not quite done yet. This one's the most done. Oh, they're really curly. I have to set them. So this one is almost done. I just need to take the green there and finish it on this side, and then I'll finish mine uh, on that side, on each side. But anyway, that's the, I like mine fitted, so I make them go in and out. But I start these at the bottom, so this is another type of spiral start. Not the best colors to show it with, but this one has one spiral starting here and one spiral starting there. Kind of looks like a mouth. <laughs> I feel like Gumby. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> anyway. So there. Almost done with these. I uh, was hoping to finish them before this today, but because of the sore shoulder, I had to take it easy yesterday. And not mess that up. Okay, so if you've done spirals, I have to catch up on chat here. Uh, Nella bought a lot of tools, some embroidery thread patterns, drafting paper, uh, and yarn to dye, and gift to my grandpa. Ooh, I need to do yarn dyeing too. You got a lot of fun stuff. Max is here. Max, did you see the charnel we played with last week? That was for you. <laughs> Um, ending result, I don't think I'd needle bind with a chenille, not because if you have the good chenille, remember, stroke the yarn, if you have the good chenille, you can do it, but you can't see the stitches when you're done, so you might as well have just crocheted it, and you wouldn't even know, <laughs> but it was fun to try anyway, so thank you for the challenge. Anyway, I'm going to put the, on the ground, or the, the camera down there, we're using my hood here, <laughs> as a brown one, Yen made it! And Max's birthday today, that's right, happy birthday. Somebody else had a birthday too quite recently and I just suddenly forgot who, but it's there. Anyway, happy birthday. So how old are you, Max? 
I have these left over from my crochet hats that I had to make my kid for. So we can play with these colors. I'm still playing. <laughs> okay, but let's go with really obvious color here. Maybe no, those two colors would bug me. Let's do this bit more Christmassy. So I'll do a round start with this. This is Vams, by the way. Uh, don't need to have it that long. This is Rauma Vams. It's a really nice one to, uh, it felts really easily. And they have such natural looking colors, she said, as she had the red. But they look, um, they're nice. They have really good colors for Viking stuff. Maybe not the Santa red, but anyway, that was because my kid wanted a hat in this. So I will start a round start. So you can start actually as many colors as you want. We could actually even do three just for fun. You bought a new washing machine with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a new TV. Really smart. So what do you do when you, uh, Torben, um, with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on your washing machine? Do you, like, start it from work, or does it load the clothes in there for you? I'm just going to do Oslo, by the way. So if I start my Oslo, say, with 10 stitches, then I need to split that up into the colors. So maybe we'll do 9 and just say 3 times 3. Let's do 3. If I do 3 colors... So stretch that out. There you have a tail. I should have had a longer tail, but I only need one of them that has a long tail. And this goes upwards. We'll put that there. Now oh, I got my mouth like right into the microphone, so it's probably loud. Washing machine with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Can you get music on that? Wait, let's start here. Sorry. Weishimize. I like that name. Hello. I, mean, I probably just butchered it anyway, but Salem, Oregon, and you're a spinner and a weaver and you want to learn null binding. Looking for an in-person online tutor. Can someone please point me in the right direction and please, please and thank you. Uh, Ann Decker is awesome for online. Um, she does a Zoom every Sunday. Uh, if Peruta is really nice, she'll put the link up there for you and you can ask her just questions right away. Anyway, just join the Zoom chat. She goes for about two hours. Uh, she has two different times that she does it, so it depends. Well, in Salem, Oregon, you might be better with the, the Sunday one at four. But there's also one that's later, so it's more Australia-friendly. And then uh, if you have the Facebook uh, needle binding group, uh, Noel Binding, N-A with a circle over it, L-B-I-N-D-I-N-G, there's many different ways to say null binding or null binding. In Norwegian, we say null binding. Um, put it that way. I'm doing a spiral start, though. This isn't for, you know, this isn't beginner friendly. I'm so sorry. But you can see how I start anyway. I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, that's going to be a little different. Uh, this is the Oslo stitch. You're not supposed to get this right away, though. Probably should have used a longer thread. Anyway, I make a knot. You know, cross it over like that. Sorry. And then pull through. So you have like a pretzel nut. You hide this in your hand, get rid of it, and then put this on your thumb so that it goes on the inside and the yarn's underneath. And then I go one, I need for also I need two loops, one here and one here. So I go under everything, lock it so your yarn doesn't jump when you pull it through, then pull it down towards you. Now I have a new one and an old one. I like to use the bottom of my fingernail to uh, figure out where to have it. So this is your old one. You can either leave it on your thumb or you can push it behind. It doesn't matter. Uh, probably should use a longer length of yarn, though. But what you're doing is you're picking up the old one from this side, keeping it on your needle, turning, and going towards you and under this one, too. Then always lock it and throw it you. These pretzels are making me <laughs> thirsty. Oh, well, come on, Torben. You're going to be like an awesome needle binder by the time we're done with it. Torben's just here for the beer. It's okay, so I have, like... I should have like maybe nine stitches total on here now. Mm. There. It's hard to do this while hugging a camera. So, if you see how I set them up here, this is on top. This is the way that it goes. If you're continuing, this is on top. But for the bottom, this one's going this way because it's a circle. And I'll use this big long tail here. So this is the good end. This is the wrong end. The, or the live end. This is the tail. So, I'll put that on here. I'm using a darning needle for this. I like a long one, but anyway. 
It's because, so now this goes, is, see, this is on top that way. This is on top this way, so now, let's see if I can do this correctly now without, while I'm looking at it upside down. I am going to take the tail and go through the bottom loops here and through the bottom loops here. It's a little hard to see, but anyway, so you pick up this one, notice the top, so you go through the bottom. Uh, it should be like three stitches, but I think I have four. Yeah, that's because, um, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so underneath, and then pull it through, Oop, the tail, and so now I have two that way. This has still got to be forced upwards, by the way. There, and then I'll take that tail and continue through this one on the bottom stitches. So again, it's up. Oh. So you want to learn how to do needle binding and you came on one of the more difficult things that we're doing. <laughs> also, if you do spiral, most people do two, but there was somebody on Facebook that asked about three, so I thought I'll just show it with three. And then lastly, I'll go through these, but remember the thing which keeps wanting to twist, it has to be up on the top. So again, this is pointing upwards. Then under one, two, three. I don't know why I'm getting four, but anyway, it's not really a big deal. Pull it through, and then I think just for shits and giggles, I'll go through one more here. So when you pull this all together, it looks like a mess. But you're basically, I don't know how I got that in there, but I can push it out later. Let's just shove it up, yell at it a little bit, and it sometimes just does it if we yell. I don't know how I got a loop stuck in there. That never happens. <laughs> okay, there. So, it kind of looks like a little rosette. I got another tail in the way here that happens. So if your tails don't get caught on the back side, then just push it through. There. So now I have the top. The top goes that way. And the top goes that way. And so now we have three starts. So you'll take, we'll start with uh, this one, which is for some reason twisted. I don't know why that's twisting, but we're going to yell at it and force it. And you're going to bind over the brown, the dark brown. I could switch to the other needle, but oh well. So, but because I'm doing my second row, I have to go actually two times in every loop, but I should have three, so I'm going to do these two together, two and three. So that one, and then I push my stitch back on. There, I have to yell at my yarn. There it goes, it's forward. So I'll do these two together. One behind, forward, and pull it through. Sure, I had to do this with three stitches. And I have to do one more time in that loop because I need to increase this round, otherwise it won't go flat. And then two and three. So two in this one. The tails and stuff are going to be annoying at first, but they'll get out of the way as the hat grows. And if it doesn't, you can just yell at it or throw it against the wall and it becomes a cat toy. <laughs> and there's my last one. Two in that loop, too. <laughs> I'm trying to see it better, so I keep lifting it out of range so it goes in front of the camera, not behind it. There. Now I ran out of these dark browns, so that's that's as far as I can go with that. If again it comes down, just cinch it more. And then now I have to take this dark brown and go over the red. Make sure it goes in the right direction. If it doesn't, like this one for some reason didn't, because I screwed up, so then you just force it. And you won't be able to tell. It'll be a secret. There we go. So I need three here. One, two, three. And my end loop goes back on my thumb. Here is my old one, by the way. Okay. I'm making this look so easy, aren't I? <laughs> I lost my old loop. I 
Okay, there it is. All right, one, two, and three. We'll go through those. That's one. I have to do two more. I should have had maybe a little bit longer the brown thread to do this with, but this is the downside of having a long needle is you might have to keep threading it every round, but I like long needles because it gives me more needle to grab on this side. So two on this one. See, then I have a lot to hold on here. That's why I like long needles. I'm not going to be able to get all the way to the end with this dark brown without splicing on more, but you get the idea. So that one would go technically over the red. And then we pick up the red and go over the brown. Or the beige, sorry. So then I need three of these. And because I screwed up, I have to be creative here. So maybe one, two. And then we'll do these two together and call that three. So one. And then a two in that one. Your increases are going to get really tricky when you do this. Because you're splitting your every row into... Two, one, we'll do these two together and call that number two. And this was number three, two in that one as well. There's a couple different ways to do a spiral start with this, a round start and spiral, but that's probably the easier one. So you see there, I can cinch the beige again. They're starting to spin. So they'll keep going. This one will go around, then this one will go around, and that one will go around. But if you want to see one with two, this is with two. It's just probably not the brightest color. So I have two starts right there, and then it increases. Aha! Okay, then I'll see what you guys wrote, and I'll do the flat start. Torben bought a Christmas beer for Carl. <laughs> I was looking at the beer Christmas calendar in the stores again, by the way, and I thought I might need to try that. Um, maybe we get this, the Christmas beer Christmas calendar and use that for beer tasting. Carl, or Torben's going to come here and do a tasting of Norwegian Christmas beer. It's a thing in Norway. They have to make a Christmas beer every year. Ah, good. Uh, Peru to put up and Deckers. So that one's a good one to check that link when you want to, if you want to learn needle binding, it's in the chat. Um, it should be able to play Vreed on max volume while washing uniforms, but no <laughs> washing machine with that. And you still don't know what to do with it, but uh, the store didn't have any washing machines without Wi-Fi. Okay, well, you're going to answer a question for me there. Um, oh, and the wife says, thank you, Karen. Approved of you're good. Stay warm. We will. Uh, but we're looking forward to see how much you can do needle binding. Jenny said uh, she accidentally bought a 14% beer for her husband once, and the only uh, and we only realized when he went to stand up after having a liter of it. Oh, my God. Is, uh, Carl, so, uh, Torben, what's the percentage of this beer that you're getting, Carl? There's my start again, by the way. I did that fast. Sorry. So I'm going to make a little chain with this one to do a... If you were going to start from, say, the bottom of the hat, or like I did on the wrist warmers, because I like doing my wrist warmers from the bottom... So I'll do like 10, three, four, five, six. This is your last loop, by the way, if you're not sure. Seven, eight, nine, Hold it too tight. So if you are making a chain for the first time and oslo stitch or needle binding, anything in needle binding, and it looks like a curly mess. Sorry, I should have pulled my tail a little shorter. If it looks like a curly mess, it's not wrong. <laughs> it's just that you need to stretch it. And then everything falls into place nicely. And then no one will ever know that you had a curly one. And if your start looks ugly, you can just cut it off. And no one will ever know that you had an ugly start either. Because needle binding doesn't unravel. So I did that one. Now I'll do another one. You need to leave, Maria, but wish you a good weekend. Good weekend to you too. It was good to see you. I think next week we might have to go an hour later though. because Or start an hour later because we have the Christmas market until 6 o'clock. And I don't think I'm going to be able to leave that 15 minutes early too. 
start YouTube. But we'll see what Carl says when he gets here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, make that a little bit big so I know where my end was and stretch it. So now this one you have this end going up because that's the way your finger goes in. So this one's going to be kind of upside down to see it. And this one you don't really need the tails, but you're going to continue this one on the bottom of that one. So you put this on and you grab, make sure it's going in the right direction. And let's see, I'll switch to this one. It might be a little easier to see. I really should have chose longer lengths for this, but... Okay, that's the upside down, that's the right way. There we go. So they go in the tops, just like you would if it was starting another row. And again, it can twist after the first stitch, so... Oh, the white one is hard to see through the phone. I think trying to needle bind while hugging a camera should be like a, an Olympic sport. It's not easy. Okay, I ran out of yarn on that one, but you get the idea. So that'll continue over that. And now this one has to go on top of that one. So put it back on my thumb. And make sure you don't twist it. Oh, you're going to get a Moebius, Moebius, I never can pronounce that one. There, so this has to continue that way. See? So we go in the tops here. It's always good to double check after you do the end loop because it can still twist. There, that's one. And then this one is next. So you're... You can, some people have two needles. They leave one needle on the white and one needle on the blue. Um, I have a tendency to drop needles if I do that because I have, most of my needles have big eyes. So I just re-thread. Um, I just re-thread the same needle. There, I think I got three. That should be enough to show it anyway. I have to use more generous lengths. Okay. So there you can see if we were to cut away the tails, which is... These are the tails. Yeah, this one and this one is the tail. See, it kind of goes around. So this will keep going over the top. And that one will keep going over the top. And so that spiral looks like what I did here. See, the brown continues over. And the green continues over. And when you get to the end... You can see I still have one spiral going here. I have to splice on new and then one spiral going there. So that was probably a really confusing thing to show, but hopefully you got it. This one has longer ones. So I would, you bind kind of as far as you can on that one. And then you can continue with that one. But you kind of have to watch it because it goes angled up. So I don't want to do any more on this side. It's pretty far, but I still have to do this one on this side. But if I were to take that all the way over, it would be taller on, the, taller on this side than on the other. So I'll just finish this one here and then bind them both off. And then I have to pick up and do one around here. You don't have to actually bind around here one row, but I like to do it because if you don't, this is going to shred quite quickly on anybody's um, wrist warmers. And usually right here too. So I usually just do one row and that kind of keeps that a little bit stronger. Okay, so let's see what you send here. Uh, Garcia, I learned to needle bind a hat from the top just a few weeks ago, and I used to needle bind from the bottom. Are, are you going to be like a top down person? No, because I'm a top down person, but Anne is a bottom up person when it comes to hats, and we can't we agree to disagree at this point. <laughs> so it's it's like a you know, the people who make the hats from the top down insist that you can only make them top down, and the people who make them from the bottom insist you can only do them from the bottom up. So it's like a war. 
and you have to choose sides. <laughs> it's the same thing with the wrist warmers, actually, though some start from the top and go down, and with the mittens, too. I start from the bottom, go, ah! Poor Uta's on the bottom up to you, you traitor. <laughs> Yenny likes both. She's bi -hatual. I like that. <laughs> uh, and Garcia's also top-down. She's like me. Um... Anne is top down. Arlene does both. She's also a bi bi hatchual. Would you call it a bi starchual? I have a problem if keeping it flat if I start at the bottom. Nella's a both too. Oh my gosh, you guys are so three of you are bi. <laughs> now I have to start mine from the top because when I do it for some reason when I decrease it, it tends to cone. Goes like, you know, that. But if I start from the top, I have no problem keeping it flat. I don't know. It's just a thing for me. It just means I could either get better at my decreases or I'm just better at increasing evenly. By Starchua. I like that. She's a by Starchua. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go and grab Carl. You can stare at my messy uh, starts here. No, it was this side. Sometimes it's kind of fun to do two of these the same color and do one and it looks like you have a really wide swirl but they're actually three and then there's this one if you wanted to look at that i'll go get carl and make him come and play with us I found a car. Now I just have to lift the camera up. Let's see. Kaya says we have to make turkey this year, but she'll cook everything else. What do you mm -hmm. think? Oops, sorry, I have to pull the camera down. Yeah. Well, um, turkey should be no problem with our time America. Yep, Charlotte says we have to bring the mayonnaise. And Peru just says make sure you spread its legs and see if it bleeds. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, that was horrible. <laughs> Um, Torben says, everyone say boo when Carl enters. At least, well, Torben did it. <laughs> the other one said, nice word, Carl, and hi, Carl. That was Garcia. Oh, nice word, Kaya, sorry. Kaya says, I don't think I figured out my stitchery, stituality yet. We found out that some of us are bi-stitual. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was the bottom up, top down debate again. We have to agree to disagree. Okay. <laughs> Um, we had a person on our tour this afternoon, our online tour, and she was from Germany, living in Sweden, and she participates in HEMA. What is HEMA? Uh, historical European martial arts. Uh, so it's... But it's very broad spectrum, so she can be doing basically anything from what we do to uh, the real hardcore stuff. Yeah, her hair was going funny. Oh, well, that's kind of cool, though. So we asked her um, after we did the weapon station. Was it... No, you were talking about... Uh, the rolls um, that people would use if they used it. Well, anyway, uh, a regular axe, battle axe, I guess you call it. What do you call one-handed, you know, the regular axe, one-handed. Not the Dane axe, battle axe. Dane axe, sword, spear. I guess we could probably add the scramus axe to the mix, though. Yeah, but that's uh, that's a weapon of last resort. It's mm -hmm. basically your uh, cutlery. It's like a bowie knife. You know, you don't bring it as a weapon, but if you need it, it can be used for that. You can chop vegetables and um, bone a fish with it. There you go. When they get up to this size, they are a little bit more weapon-like than they normally are, but uh, it's basically a multi-tool. Say it with me. Size does matter. <laughs> okay, that's what he said. It's a multi-tool. But which weapon would you use now? And uh, she, she said sword, and that's when we found out she was a HEMA person. What weapon would you use? What's well, your weapon of choice? And it depends. Weapons are tools. You don't use a sword to hammer in the nail, so to speak. I would. Uh, so it depends. Um, if... Yeah, no. Uh, there are really no other answer to it. Because uh, for every weapon I can pick up, somebody can pick up a weapon that is very good at fighting that particular weapon. So... Yeah. 
By the way, while we're still talking about, uh, yeah, Yenny also says, I said, by what, well, there's some other stuff anyway, while I still figure out who likes what weapon. Yenny writes, um, uh, nice vegetable knife. I agree. That's a vegetable knife. You could cut a watermelon with that, no problem. Yeah, the well, Norwegian Vikings mostly fought uh, Danish and Swedish people, so close enough. <laughs> Yenny's from Sweden. So, um, would you cut a turkey? I always with try to <laughs> insult somebody on your street. You do, he, cuts, he insults everybody. Uh, we have United States, Canada, Holland, and um, Sweden and Norway representing. You if I have, missed one, oh, Finland. You don't have any hard targets? I <laughs> hard targets. Go for the Polish. My family's from Poland. Well, I'm a third generation American, so uh -huh. my family's originally from Poland, so you can attack that one. What are you going to do? Ned, I'm really happy with your Polish ancestry. It makes you know exactly how to prepare any potato. Potatoes are good. My favorite. <laughs> so, um, Carl, <coughs> when you d you like to sharpen that knife all the time, what is your goal when you sharpen your knife? How to make it as sharp as to do what? Uh, I should be able to take the bikini line off a moth without a moth noticing. I've, it's the only one I've ever heard, but I like the bikini line off a moth. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, Arlene says, um, make sure to start the turkey early this year. I think we have to start at like 8 a.m. so that we can eat it by 5 p.m. Yes. <laughs> the midnight turkey thing is probably not. Uh, Do you remember what we stuffed it with? Was it apples, onions, and lemons? Was that it? Apple, uh, onion, lemon? Yeah, remember apples and onions. I don't remember lemons. I think we had one lemon in there. We'll have to look at it. But you had to stuff the hoo-ha. I wasn't doing that. I figured you might have more expertise. <laughs> Stuffing things up the hua of the turkey and determining when it reaches max capacity. You, you, we had with pictures. You have to go on, if you go on Instagram and then under um, on the Instagram and you go where all those little circles are and just keep tabbing until you see the turkey. I think I called it tame turkey. <laughs> and you can see the whole story about how well it went. Yeah, I did actually. But you now you heard what Kaya said. We have to make it every year now. Yeah. But if we only have to do the one day and she takes all the rest because we figured we're probably going to be there from Christmas Eve if we'll see if we can get there before 9 o'clock this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, every Norwegian, when they have a Christmas dinner, it is at promptly at like 5 o'clock. 4 o'clock, what, the silver boys sing and then you can do it or something or the king's speech and then you're allowed to eat. But not before 5 o'clock and not after 5 o'clock. We got there at what, like 7 <laughs> due to a snowstorm? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, so that was... Uh, We'll try to we'll try to start it a little early. Fortunately, your family wasn't too pissed off that we didn't eat right at five o'clock that day, though. Mm. It'll be fun. Okay. Uh, how about banana and stuffing? Says Torben. I mean, you did put banana on a pizza once. Yeah. Uh, you did. I don't really see any good reason why not, except that it, this might be a little bit too expensive and important to experiment with. Yeah, that's true. Could be fun, though. A mashed banana or something. Maybe we should try it on a we grilled could. chicken or something yeah, before we, could. we go for the full-blown turkey. So he's going to stuff a hen with the banana. Okay. Um, we could maybe just slice bananas and put it on the outside of the turkey with little toothpicks. So it looked like a, you know, a honey-glazed, not a honey-glazed ham with pineapple, but maybe like a banana-glazed turkey. You're eating this crap, Kaya. I just want to say you're going to regret those words. <laughs> Torben says they eat at seven. What kind of Norwegian family are you, Torben? He's in the House of Dragon, though, so they're different there. Who eats their Christmas dinner at seven that on Christmas Eve? Christmas traditions vary as soon as you walk five kilometers in a random direction. And no, that's it's, true. I'm in the uh, Oslo area. Yeah. They're very specific. It's um, There's the King's Speech and then the Silver Boy Choir. What's the Silver Boy Choir, for those who don't know? That's a unique it's thing. It's a boy choir. It's Why do they call them Sørgutten or whatever? I don't know. Uh, it's um, this is a tradition that obviously didn't exist before the invent of the television. Mm. So it's uh, to the extent that it even is a tradition, it's a new one. And they sing in Oslo Dome Kirke or the uh, Dome Church in uh, Cathedral or whatever in uh, Oslo. Um, okay. Yenny has a picture of a banana and a picture of a puking emoji or a sick emoji. He's not quite puking yet, but it's very green. Yeah, maybe she is not <laughs> the type of people that like bananas. You should have seen the banana on the pizza. Actually, that was pretty good. 
Yeah. We even put liver pate on a pizza too, just to see. Yeah, that also worked. That actually was pretty good. Uh, we were messing with the British boy who said, you can't put anything the on The one thing that didn't work on the pizza was the water chestnuts. Yeah, no, that wasn't good. No, so. Liver pate and bananas works fine on pizza. <laughs> liver pate and bananas. It's not a Norwegian thing. It's um, it's a Gudvangen specialty. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more local than Gudvangen. Um, Peruta says, well, we just got an unfortunate insight to Carl and Karen's bedroom. What? It's a banana and a turkey. You sick person. <laughs> ah, Garcia says, prepare your turkey the day before. So if you slather it in mayonnaise the day before, who put it in the oven? What Do we stuff the hoo-ha on the day? This is getting difficult again. <laughs> yes, that's because you try to take on board every piece of advice you get, even when they are uh, contradictory Don't forget to that each other. You make a tent, but you put it on before, when for the whole time, you take it off after, and once it's no, you only put it on for the last. If you should have done everything everybody has told you, you should use mayonnaise, you should absolutely not use mayonnaise, you should use butter, you should make a tent, you should put it in a bag, and... You should all, all of pat this it is... dry, and then you should leave the bacteria in it, or you should take them back. Yeah, you should wash it, and you should not, not wash it. Yeah, you should wash it, and you should not wash it. Uh, so, if you listen to everybody, it's going to be one hell of a weird turkey. Yeah. It's also going to be a paradox. And we have to thaw the turkey out at least a day in advance, I think. So, when you were thawing up the turkey, and I asked him, how, how heavy is this turkey? Because we didn't, we didn't know the weight. So, Carl... <laughs> There's a reason he looks like Carl takes the box and holds it up his head to try to read the weight of the turkey, the thawed turkey, by the way. And it was like Blade, an epi a mo the movie Blade, just blood. <laughs> like, well, there went the turkey juices. <laughs> so I guess we're going bacteria free this time. We don't need to rinse them. <laughs> yeah, no, but we learn. You look like, you know, a Carrie on prom night or something. <laughs> it was funny. Okay, so yeah, Turkey 2.0 this year. This will be fun. Uh, so we will definitely be in Celia. Uh, Max says, I practice a round start. Uh, that the round start that I used, it turned uh, to be different from what I normally work on. Yeah, you can do a round start that way. If you have like a, just, you know, the one chain of like you know, eight to 10 stitches, whatever you use, and you have that long tail, you can just thread it through and then cinch it and you'll have a round. And then you don't have to try to do it, make a rosette first. You, will, you can actually just take the tail and run it through the bottom stitches and pull tight. It's actually the same way of, of uh, starting in the round. It's just that you're kind of deconstructing it by putting the tail in after instead of binding around, if that makes any sense. And he says, oh, no, don't drink the turkey juice. You tried. Not on purpose. <laughs> uh, let's see what's the temperature or the weight. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, and he says, I don't like the slimy buggers. <laughs> Uh, and I'm reading backwards. Anne says, don't call it pizza anymore. I guess it's not pizza once we put all that crap on it. Liver pate and bananas and... Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. As long as it still has the bread and the cheese and the tomatoes, it's still a pizza. You're think. making the Italians cry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have to insult some nation every year, every day you do. Um... Oh, Arlene says, I don't make a bread stuffing. I make a traditional Scottish sausage stuffing. Cool. So... I, we haven't tried. I don't know if I'm ready to try stuffing. That's a little too advanced. My mom makes stuffing, but this is kind of funny. So the reason they call it stuffing is because you shove it up the hoo-ha and it kind of gets prepared, keeps the turkey moist, whatever, and then you scoop it out and you serve it. But, you know, my mom can't do stuffing that way. She wants to do You don't do stuffing that way. You make stuffing in a pan all separate. So then it's stuffing, but it didn't actually get stuffed into the turkey. It's kind of... But it's still stuffing. Yes. <laughs> I can't do it. Italian fruit salad. Is that what you could call it, maybe? Not with liver pate. You can't have liver pate in a fruit salad. Why not? We should try it. It's not vegan, but it's... <laughs> we could try it. Um, so, Carl? Oh, yeah, it's bread with sweet spread. Okay, we have to try that. That's what it is. It's your pizza. It's bread with sweet spread. It's a pole leg. Poleg, uh, we don't have that word in English, but poleg is the, anything you put on top of a bread, an open-faced sandwich. So like mayonnaise or butter or cheese or ham, any of that, that's all poleg. Cucumbers. Yeah. And liver pate, of course. Um, but yeah, next week, um, I have no idea what time we're at. Now we're doing pride. We have 15 more minutes. Next week, we have the Christmas market. It goes till 6 o'clock. 
I highly doubt I will be able to start at 6 o'clock. Do you think we should start at 7? We can't go Sunday, can't go Friday, because we'll be the I same issue. I would not be surprised if it, you could easily start at 6 o'clock, because... I have to, we be, have I have enough, to work in the store, though, I think. Yes, but we have enough people that we can take somebody out of ordinary circulation and put them in the store for the last hour. It's no problem. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, you'll have to... Obviously, I'll try to be a little quicker. Maybe I'll try to post it on Friday, so it'll either be at 6 or 1 hour later. On, on Saturday? Uh, uh, I can't say for sure, because yeah. I don't know exactly what goes into this Christmas market, but the way I see it... We have about it, 17 stands and 8 houses participating. The way I see it, when it comes to workload, it's going to be as per normal. There is nothing extra. No, but uh, especially because all those stands are not leaving on Saturday. They're leave Only one is. The rest yeah, of them are leaving on Sunday, they so they're not need, dismantling. They don't need an employee to hold their hand. No. So... We can do that. Maybe. Okay, Friday. I'll try to post it on Friday this week. I will be better. She said, and uh, oh, by the way, I posted this one 15 minutes before we were going to start again. Uh, Yanni says, a friend of mine won't eat the stuffing because it's inside the turkey. She happily eats the stuff, the turkey itself, though. Go figure. You know, I'm, I'm kind of on your front side. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the, what, if, the, what was it? Was it apples, onions, and I think it was lemon in the hoo-ha? We threw that shit away. <laughs> I didn't want to eat it because it was inside the hoo-ha of a turkey. <laughs> so I'm kind of with your friend on that one. I think she gave, you know, it gave birth to that. I don't want to eat it. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't, it was just meant to keep the turkey moist. Yeah, it is. It's uh, meant to keep the turkey the, moist. If the idea was to eat it, then we should probably season it or something. Because... Well, that's what the stuffing is. Stuffing is like, um, you, my mom, could, she even used hamburger, which I thought was kind of funny. You're stuffing hamburger <laughs> into a turkey. But uh, bread, bread you have to use, I think. Um, it, I don't know if it goes like a meatloaf kind of way, but you shove bread in there and some celery. And yeah, there's a million different recipes for that. Mm. But And then actually you are meant to scoop it out and, and eat it. But I, uh, I've never been a stuffing fan. Probably because my mom uses celery and onions. I don't know. Keep the hoo-ha moist, says Charlotte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one word that will make everybody scream. Or every woman scream. Moist. It's cringeworthy, that word. Anyway, uh, Garcia says, yes, we do, Peruta. Oh, yeah, we'd love to see the market, actually. Ah, I will try, but I think I'm stuck. Uh, we're still on winter staff, so we don't have all the summer help, and I think I don't think we're going to actually, I don't know. I would love to run around and do it, but then I have to have somebody fill in the store while I get stuck in the shop because the other people that know how to work the shop, uh, that's you and Greg and Maria. Maria's got to help with kids' activities, and you and Greg are going to be guiding. Greg is probably not going to be guiding. Maybe we stick Tore him in. wanted the uh, Norwegian Christmas tradition guiding, and uh, the customers are going to be Norwegian, so... But the point is yeah. that this isn't going to be any more demanding than an ordinary day, pretty much. If I can get a, a live, when I when we had the regular market on, in October this year, I did a live sending on the Viking Valley Facebook page, and I did a live sending on Instagram. They've got to be pretty short, though, because I don't have too much time. But I should be able to swing that this yeah. year, if Greg or somebody relieves me for an hour. I don't think that should be any kind of problem. Yeah, maybe but, I can uh, then I can show you the Christmas market. Um, it will probably be dark by the time I get to show it, though, but that's actually kind of a good thing because we've got, well, Georg's a pyromaniac, so he, our chief did, so he's got candles all up and down the road of, of the Viking and hanging outside the walls and everything, so we're going to have a lot of candles. I don't know if it's going to be bright enough. We might have to introduce Christmas lights into this, and if we do, we usually go with the simple yellow ones, or you know, kind of. I think that ship is sailed. We don't have time to put up Christmas lights before the market, even if no, we wanted really. to. So I don't. It's think a debate every happen. year because Christmas lights are not Viking, but it's dark. But if yeah, uh, no, but the Christmas lights, we have enough lights in the village that yeah. we can safely move around in it, and it also looks pretty good. Okay. We don't need the Christmas lights for navigation purposes. No. And then all the work that it is to put them up and take them down again for just one weekend of use is yeah, no, uh, kind of wasteful. But the candles were quite cool. Um, I wanted to put a picture of it up on the uh, uh, Viking Valley Facebook page, but uh, I didn't get one in time. And they did, um, Georg took a photo of it when they were all up for it, like of a test run to see what they looked like. And it looked pretty good, but it was a foggy day. So you wouldn't know it was in Gudvangen except for the Viking houses. You couldn't see mountains or anything. But 
you could see the the glow of the candles at least, which was nice. Uh, Torben says a horse, a Danish, and a hamburger went into a turkey. <laughs> What kind of beer did you get, Torb? I mean, did you get Carl, by the way? Uh, Yen, by the, she wrote uh, something that was kind of cute. Because I could just see how this would work on you. Let's see if I can find it. She accidentally bought, I think, her husband, a, was it 14? Yeah, I accidentally bought a 14% beer for my husband once, and we only realized it when he went to stand up after having a liter of it. So... Mm. <laughs> yep, that might happen. He would do that with 6%, I just want <laughs> Remember now, when we do the beer tasting, we have to try them in shot glasses. And um, you said, why are we using shot glasses to taste beer? It's beer. And I said, because you've got to taste 18 beers. You were kind of half in the bag by the time we were done. Yeah. <laughs> we were like reading the back of the bottles anyway. And then it was, uh, this is actually about a year ago, so you can figure out what week that is anyway. But we're because they come from different parts of Norway, and Norway's got a gazillion different dialects because mountains so he had to read the oslo bottles with the oslo dialect the uh, bergen <laughs> bottles with the bergen di dialect and tromso with the it was kind of funny and then by the end of it we're like just fuck it just drink it <laughs> tell me what you think so we might have to do a little less than 18 beers but uh, i'll leave that one up uh, or to maybe Torben the, to just the episode will be longer than one hour yeah it has to be yeah no the last one went like an hour and a half it was that's the longest i think episode we ever did but it's it was it was funny so, um, but we're going to drag Torben here for that. Torben hasn't been on this side of YouTube yet for ours. Are we going to dress him up like a Viking? Do you have extra Viking clothes in his size? Yes. <laughs> you can wear a dress. No, I think we'll just make him go normal. We're sitting indoors anyway, so we don't have to be Viking. The only reason we're Viking now is because we were working earlier today. Anne Moreau says, use stuffing, use a stuffing you can eat. Yummy. That might be a good idea too. Um, I don't know if I'm going to rock the <laughs> recipe. We made it work last year. Good thing we took a lot of pictures. Yeah, no, if you want to take on board every idea, it's going to be the weirdest turkey in the universe. But uh, We're going to need more turkeys. <laughs> Dorbin has, uh, says, address dot, dot, dot. Should we? Uh, you can negotiate with him. What is what is your what what is your significant other? What does Karen think about this, uh, Torben? Could be fun. Uh, will Santa be in the turkey? <laughs> right, Jan. Do you think we can get Georg in the turkey? Why would we want to? <laughs> Our chieftain looks like Santa. We don't know where the hell he goes on Christmas Eve. He swears he's not Santa, but you know he's just missing. He comes back on Christmas Day though, so <laughs> he looks like Santa. Uh, let's see. Garcia says, uh, Torben, and they didn't come out again. Oh, yeah, with the uh, a horse, a Danish, and a hamburger went into a turkey. And then uh, Garcia answers, and they didn't come out again. <laughs> oh, yeah, remember to give a thumbs up. Thank you, TV. Yes, give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, because, um, oh, I'm up to 1.32K. So, what, 1,320 subscribers now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be an influencer when I grow up. Mm-hmm. No, I think this is fun just the way it is. Uh, Rudolph would go well with the turkey. Yes, he would. Um, welcome to Norway. We eat reindeer. It's so good. I'm sorry, but, you know, Rudolph is pretty good. <laughs> Poor Rudolph. No, no, no. Rudolph the red-nosed dinner plate. Um, who did you have in the... What kind of tours did you have this year? Or the, this week? I, I, you didn't keep it? We had Ukraine? I, I haven't kept track, really. Uh, today we had Ukraine, we had three different parts of the United States, we had France, Lithuania, the French did, I don't think they would, no, they went in, Lithuania, well, Norwegian, and Poland, I think we had today. Did you get any new um, countries on your list? This is what I'm saying, I'm not keeping track right now, so I don't know. Ah, okay, well, we got a lot of them anyway, we got most of the globe now, and they're visiting the village, so it's kind of fun. Um... What else? We got five more minutes. What can you entertain us with? What kind of weapon were you gonna use? Okay, so you know, you which weapon would you use? What's your weapon of choice? Well, uh, as I said, it depends on the circumstances. But if I'm going to fight somebody and I don't know which weapon he, uh, weapons he or she is going to bring, mm -hmm. then the safest bet is probably a sword and shield combination. Okay. There are things that are very effective against sword and shield, and if you are fighting, for instance, somebody with a Danax who knows how to use it 
den väldigt dynaxis pretty much the counter to sword and shield but it's tricky to learn so unless they are very good at situational awareness you can usually get them to run out of uh, places to go uh, they have to be very good at going backwards because they want to keep me at a distance and I want to be close to them so I will keep trying to crowd them all the time and they have to try to avoid me while attacking me with that horrendously long axe uh, sometimes when I've tried this, I've managed to get people to uh, basically back into fences and chairs and basically any object that's behind them. Because I can't look at that and me at the same time. But if they have good situational awareness, good reaction speed and the Dynax, mm. I, if I was to fight somebody I knew had a sword and shield, I would probably choose the Dynax. Yeah. But if I'm going in blind and I don't know, I might have a spear, I might have a sword and shield, I might have a sword and axe, there might be dual wielding axes, or the safest bet is sword and shield. Hmm. I think I'd have to use a spear because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And didn't you say that if you didn't know what kind of weapon you should use or no weapon experience, then a spear would be the way to go? Well, uh, in a real fight, yes. Reenactment combat, not so much because you have to know the safety rules to use a spear safely. Uh, you said anything and, about being safe. Yeah, no, if it's a real fight, then uh, I would probably go with the spare in your situation, but uh, that probably wouldn't save you. No? What would save me? Well, not being in the fight, probably. Yeah. But uh, I'll stick to needle binding. The sword is so much faster than any other weapon because of the uh, balance point is so close to your hand that you can move it around. Uh, extremely quickly compared to all the other ones. You can get the spare to move very quickly also, but it's uh, it's more predictable. I'm actually the more, length, I'm more afraid of Alex and Cecilia with the spare than My I am with you. Yeah. Because uh, they are uh, active and they run, uh, they run around all the time. Oh yeah, they're faster than I am. So they are not standing, they are not standing statically trying to defend. So, Which I would probably do because walking is work. Uh, when I was sparring with Alex, <laughs> it uh, I would say it took her about 10 minutes yeah. to be good enough to be a proper challenge for me when she was using a spare and I was using she was quick uh, with that thing. Uh, shield and axe. Yeah. We had uh, we had another kid here, I think it was Leela's kid or something that was here. And, oh my God, that's... he. He got a shield and he was like running around, ding, 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 like Pepe Le Pew, just, pfft. and everybody on the field, all the ones were just like running for their lives, and I think including you, because <laughs> he was fast and scary with that thing. Yeah, but he was also tiny, so you're not yeah, really, he is, he was like, <laughs> you're not really going full contact with him. I was less no. concerned about hurting Alex than I was about hurting him. Yeah, okay. Oh, he was quick though. That kid was, a, was kid was brilliant. Uh, let's see, what do we going to see here? Um... Torben says his less his weapon would be Lassie, Lassie I'm thinking Lassie the dog, but that's not that's not the same thing. Uh, uh, a border collie. <laughs> he is talking about the weaponized uh, black metal vocalist from Songdal, Lassie yeah? Birdal. Uh, you use him as a weapon by pointing at somebody and then leaning over to Lassie and say, "Where to go and call the mother? <laughs> you know what he called your mother." <laughs> <laughs> and then Lasse will just go and kill them and you try to saunter off in the opposite direction but then the police will be busy with him. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see, what else do we get here? Oh, bow and arrow for Garcia. And uh, Yenny agrees. She says headshot from afar. That's probably a safe bet. Kaya wants to know if we have any Christmas wishes, by the way. Yes, would you like to make the turkey? <laughs> <laughs> I wish for you to make the turkey. I have, I got yarn last year um, from one of your sisters anyway. I think it was, uh, no, it was from Kaya. I have to use that still. I'm still working but on my stash. Imagine how it's so good though. I have to like wait to start Imagine that how one. intimidated you were last year of having to make a turkey for Norwegian people who just expect you to put the fucking thing in the oven and take it out again. <laughs> Imagine how intimidating it would be for her to make a turkey to a genuine American. See, now I'm, 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 I'm thinking, okay, if I have to make turkey... And because one... of her Polish blood, you can't even mess around with potatoes. No, no, you don't... Scream. You steam potatoes! Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> you boil the potatoes and mash them. No, they're like, here, you can make the potatoes. And she gives me this, this steamer thing. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> baked potato maybe but <laughs> I've never well I mean you can steam potatoes but I forgot that um my uh, kid's great-grandmother she also does it that way with a mandel potato the Christmas potato anyway you have to steam them but apparently those ones get really dry if you don't so maybe that's the thing but I, I've never really steamed potatoes before it's not like it's an unusual thing it's just that I can't cook <laughs> so, and then um Oh, so it was one of the... Th yeah, no, so I, you know, I'm kind of thinking everybody's going to want, like, restaurant quality food here, and I suck, and... Uh, no, I think your mother made us, what was it, um, some sort of a, a cutlet or whatever that had um, breading around it. What the hell is that called again? Schnitzel. She made oh, a yeah. schnitzel anyway, and she goes, here you go, and it's like, it might be a little bit crispy. It's, like, completely black on one side. I'm like, yep. this is my kind of cook. <laughs> I, can, can, I can do that. I, can, yeah. I burn schnitzel too. No, you thought you had destroyed the garlic bread the other day. Oh, I did. <laughs> okay, we're going over time now. I was making garlic bread and it's just like put it in the freezer. But of course we bought it in the afternoon. So it was no longer frozen by the time we went to make it at night. But I put it in the oven as if it had to go the full time as if it was frozen. So that went, well, I thought it was burned. And Carl's like, just like my mom makes it. <laughs> No, this turkey be no problem as long as it's not bleeding. <laughs> and it's only a matter of mayonnaise at this point. Mayonnaise. TB says, run away, by the way, with the spear and such. Um, Yenny doesn't want much for Christmas. I don't know. You can't go wrong with yarn. I only have like 10,000 skeins. No, I don't know. The yarn is good. What do you want for Christmas? He likes silver. He's not a cheap date. No, I am because I have bronze. <laughs> what do you want for Christmas? Men våpen och kläder ska vänner gå vast, för det har varit på det själva sin dag. Okej, okay. you have to repeat that for the... That's from the Hovamål. Is uh, it from Hovamål? With weapons and clothing you should gift your friend, because they will carry it on their bodies. <laughs> oh my god, you should see the chat, it's kind of funny. Uh, let's see, Torben says, my weapon would be lost a bit, uh, and he says, Jenny doesn't want much for Christmas, because Jenny said headshot from afar. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Yenny says, yeah, I'm very easy to shop for. Torben says, Merry Christmas, Yenny. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> and they're sending gifts all around. <laughs> uh, the pen, because it's mightier than the sword. I like that one, Suzanne, by the way. Uh, the, the pen, because it's mightier than the sword. Yeah, no, and everyone's, yeah, Carl just wants a banana. Yeah, no, I think uh, Garcia's right. See you next <laughs> week. I'll try to post it on, uh, I'll try to get a link up on Friday night, though, so we will know. Uh, whether we go at six or seven o'clock on Saturday next week, but I'll try to I'll try to do something. Um, I'll try to do some sort of a live uh, five minute live or something like that during the Christmas market, so you can kind of get a run around. It might take ten minutes to go through, but I would have to do it. Um, watch the Viking Valley Facebook because I don't know if I have time to post it to my Instagram as well, but I should be able to at least pull off 10 minutes but viking valley facebook yeah. page has to go but, first uh, also remember there will be a day plan made sometime the day before the yeah. christmas market so mm. uh you will know the day before whether yeah. you have time or not and unless... my boss would definitely want me to put a live up on the facebook page so so all you people who didn't make it can just suffer and see what you missed out on you <laughs> know but actually if they're close by and they didn't make it on saturday they could come on sunday still no anyway Bye. Good luck with your spirals, by the way. <laughs> I think it was quite confusing when I explained it. I'll yeah. get Carl a pair of socks or a loss of bear for Christmas, then says Kaya. <laughs> Are you talking about uh, birth control spirals? Yeah, with that. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.